In this video, we're getting started with Anacubic 3D DLP printing. Printing items in HO and N scale, explaining the process of 3D printing and how to finish the model by painting. And welcome to another video tutorial with Märklin of Sweden. Yeah, it's been a few weeks since uh, last video and <laughs> I spent uh, those uh, days playing with a new toy. Uh, yes, it's, uh, it's a 3D printer. <laughs> I never thought I, I would uh, enter the printing uh, part of this uh, hobby, but uh, yeah. A new printer has been released in the market, which uh, well I couldn't really say no to uh, trying it out. It's a uh, this this the the printers used out there has uh, LCD screens, which is which is um, pr printing in 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 floating resin. So it's UV coming up, UV light, and um, it hardens the resin, and out comes a, a model for what you want to print. Uh, these are typically 2K or 4K, but the, the drawback with these ones is that the life for the LCD glass with this UV coming through is only 2000 hours. And uh, hey, if you're buying a printer and it's just 2000 hours, I don't know, <laughs> I've been kind of hesitant. But this one has a new technology which is called DLP, which is uh, it's a projector instead. So you have this UV uh, laser which is uh, projected on a mirror which is moving. So instead of, of uh, that uh, blurry LCD, you get a, a very sharp and distinct uh, light up on the UV. And like when you're at the dentist, this builds up and hardens the plastic and builds the model. Uh, it's energy efficient, so no noisy fans. It's really silent in your workshop. And uh, also uh, the life is about 10 times longer than the uh, old LCD type uh, printers. The other thing which made me change my mind is the price. <laughs> yeah, this, um, this printer is uh, it's like a Merklin Loco in price or a, a decent passenger coach set. So, you know, and over the past two weeks I had this printer, I, I printed stuff which I typically buy from companies like Faller or, or uh, Walters uh, to a value of, of half of the what the printer costs. So, you know, for me, it's uh, that's why I'm doing this video. <laughs> I'm, I, I, I want to show you what, what can be done with this type of printers and they don't have to be expensive. Uh, so enough talk. Uh, let's have a look at uh, some of the things I've printed so far. First, we need a drawing. And so far, I've been downloading all of the drawings free of charge from a site called Thingiverse. And I found this uh, girl, it's uh, called Enli there. You will find her if you search for that profile. And she has uh, made some drawings for her father, who has a HO scaled model railroad. And um, quite a few interesting, well drawn uh, CAD drawings, like this uh, rail bike, for instance, which I really wanted on my layout as well. I downloaded this uh, rail bike. Uh, the CAD model looks like this. And then I just uh, printed this on the printer and it turned out like this on the layout. Here I just printed it in one part and then painted it. Another uh, item I downloaded from Enli is this uh, bicycle. I printed this one to uh, HO scale and then it turned out like this when I painted it in blue, silver and black. So very nice. More designs. Uh, this is a classic a water horse or a water crane for steamers. Here painted in grey. This is another must to have on the layout, many of them actually, it's uh, outdoor uh, control boxes for signals. Here painted in green, dry brushed in grey. This is interior for switch towers. This is specific one is from Judel in Germany, which was spread over Europe in the early 19th. 
printed here. I tried to print this in N scale and then it turned out like this. So not so bad, but it was tricky to get all the levers in one piece. Here is the HO scale version, very super detailed, I would say, painted in gray and dry brushed with the gun metal. But on Thingiverse you'll find millions, I would say, drawings which could be scaled to N or HO scale and printed and used on your model railroad. That's uh, tanks and cars, trucks, uh, luggage trolleys, uh, you name it. Everything is out there, free to download and for a few pennies of resin possible to print once you have the printer in place. Let's now have a look at the print process. What you do, you open the file you downloaded from Thingiverse and then it pops up on your tray. This software here I'm using is a Photon Workshop which follows when you buy the printer, you get this. The purpose with this software is to prepare the CAD model for printing. And what we need to do is to add supports. And to make room for those, you can uh, raise the object with five or 10 millimeters like I do here. So we have clearance underneath to first have a plate and then supports. This is very easy to add. It, it has uh, automatic functions. Uh, I go for the heavy type supports here. You can set a long row of parameters for this, but there's really no need for that. All you need to do is to um, use the automatic support here. So what I do, I print on, uh, pr press on fill, and then you have all the necessary supports for printing this model. Once you gain skill in this, you can uh, manually delete or add uh, supports uh, in order to optimize your print. But at this stage and for this print, I didn't do anything. So I went back to um, this first image pressed on the slice button and then I save it to my disk. Uh, and it, I've saved it once before just to check that everything was okay before I did this save. So, but this is what it looks like. It's a good thing to press on preview here so you can check that all of the layers looks correct. This is the first layer the printer will print and then you can either step through the layers one by one here or you can press on that uh, play button and uh, it will play for you the entire print process. Now, if uh, no layers are missing or anything looks funny, then you can save this uh, DLP file to a USB stick. I bought uh, this uh, opaque resin in apricot color uh, for my first prints. Um, this is the material we're gonna pour into that jar on the printer. So insert that USB stick where you have your uh, uh, prepared file, remove the cover and pour that resin into that jar. Use protective gloves when handling this uh, resin. Put the hood back over the printer and press on that power button. Now the first step is to set the UV power level to 80% which is valid for this opaque apricot resin I've selected. Okay, 84 is fine. And then we can press on print and select that rail bike and press on that play button to get started on the printout. Now that uh, table will lower itself down into the resin and print the first layers of this printout. So it continues for an hour and then it's ready. Then uh, we need to clean both the printout, the printed item, as well as the print head and the jar. And the easiest way to do this is to have three bins, or actually these are lunch boxes with lids filled with alcohol. So it's ethanol. 97% uh, um, which I filled into this and the, the, the first uh, cleaning is made in the leftmost uh, jar 
And then I move over to the mid jar, uh, which uh, obviously have a cleaner alcohol in it. And lastly, I move the entire thing over to the last jar where the final cleaning is made. I will show you later the process and how I work with these um, jars in order to be able to regain some of that alcohol because the alcohol has its a cost with that as well. So dry the printer head and the models. Then uh, untighten the screws which are holding the jar with the, the excess resin and pour that through a filter back into the container for the resin. This uh, resin can be used now in the next print as well. So we're reusing that as well. Now in some cases uh, if the UV power level is set on the wrong number or if you need some fine adjustment to your printout settings there might be that uh, the printout stuck to this film instead of the printhead. Easiest way to remove it is just to push with light force from behind and just remove that printout from that plastic FEP as it's called. Now I do the same cleaning process for the jar uh, which I use for the printhead and also for the printout through these uh, three bins with alcohol. Once clean I dry it with a soft cloth. This is a cotton towel actually. As you see here in the first jar uh, you get a lot of uh, resin there. So what you can do is to leave it so the resin sinks to the bottom of this uh, jar or lunchbox if you like. What I do is then I, I pour slowly so not all of that the resin goes down into this bottle but mostly the alcohol and the resin is still in that jar. Then uh, you all need to do is to put that jar outside in sun uh, for a day or in your curing chamber if you have one and once it, it's cured it's uh, very easy to remove all of it like this from that uh, jar. Then I circulate these so this uh, clean jar is put last and I fill that uh, with uh, clean 97% ethanol. This way I'm able to recirculate and reuse about uh, half of the ethanol I buy. So that's a good advantage. Well, back to our uh, print out of this uh, rail bike. This uh, tool followed with the printer this is probably great for larger printouts, but for uh, tiny HO scale objects, this is uh, probably better. So be careful not to damage the print head, loosen it and then cut away the supports from that uh, rail bike. So first I cut all of the supports without damaging the printout. Once I got the bottom plate uh, removed, I can cut away all of the supports still remaining underneath the model. Now this needs to be cured because it's uh, kind of like rubber at this point. So what we need to do is to put it either outside in the sun, but since I live in Sweden, I decided to go for this uh, curing machine, which has built in UV light. So I put on that protective hood and then I cure it for 10 minutes. I think though for this small uh, piece of um, printout, I think three minutes would have been more than enough. But anyway, now it's uh, really hard and we can uh, remove the last remains of the supports. Now we're gonna paint this um, model. To simplify that, I use a wooden stick like this with a piece of sticky rubber uh, which you use to put posters on the wall etc and then I push the uh, print out into that. After that I uh, cover the entire print out the rail bike with uh, a layer of uh, primer. This is MIG one shot gray primer. And I apply it using my airbrush to get a uniform coat over the entire bike. 
once that is done I first paint the wooden surfaces like this uh, bench here as well as the floor is also made in wood like this with the wood in place I start with the metal parts and the metal frame is uh, painted red like this And lastly, I paint the black details on the bike. Yeah, like this. Once uh, all of the bike has been painted to your liking, you should leave it to dry overnight. This is uh, what it looks like uh, before weathering. And I would say the only weathering I will do with this is to dry brush some gray paint over the edges and the contours just to give it a bit of a used look. So just a very, very light coat. And this is what it looks like when it's uh, in place next to the tracks in my, in my yard. This model took about 50 minutes to print and one hour to paint. All right, so I hope I've given you a, a, a bit of a flavor of what you can actually print with this um, uh, new printer from Anacubic. Uh, other examples are like buffers. If you're running trains on your layouts, you will soon find out that the buffers are falling off from, from the passenger cars. Uh, and when you're vacuuming the track, it's like <laughs> those buffers goes away. And with this device, it's easy to print new buffers. And buffers are really easy to draw. I, I even me can draw buffers in a 3D CAD software. So it's, it's also uh, definitely an area uh, where you can use this device. And uh, another thing which I planning to do. I don't know if you saw, but in um, on this uh, Thingiverse uh, you can already download the uh, uh, drawings uh, and print out interiors for Donnerboxen and uh, these the German <laughs> green cars and Silberlings, the German uh, silver um, cars as well. Uh, so so there, are, there is a lot of things you can do with this printer and if you have ideas uh, which you can contribute to the other views of this um, video, please post them in the comment field below. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I will be watching this and uh, try to pick up um, uh, th ideas uh, for, of stuff to print. Uh, I will also be publishing my uh, drawing as I uh, learn to, to draw in, in 3D CAD on Thingiverse uh, without charge, so they will be downloadable uh, for you if you're interested in 3D printing. Everything on this channel is totally dependent on uh, the support from the patrons. I got uh, two new patrons this week, so I'm super happy about that. Uh, if you want to support the channel and make sure that uh, the, there is a continuation of what we're doing here, uh, please get over to Patreon, set up a support account there from like, you know, one, two dollars per month or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And don't forget to subscribe, enable that little bell and you will get a notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see ya!